All right, guys, we're back. After I heat press this, I heat press the white. And now we're going to go back in and do some more white on top of it. And what you're going to notice is it's going to get brighter, whereas before it was all soaking in. So now I'm going to start going in with a little more detail. Get this to really brighten up. Now I've got over shirts six to seven times to get it to get real bright white. But this time we'll just keep this at the brightest we're going to go. And then we'll, we'll make it look even brighter with adding contrast once we start coming in with the with the other colors. The, the black and gray is that we'll get it to, uh, to get that brightness. So far, I've probably used uh, four color cups, maybe five color cups. You end up going through a lot of white paint when you're doing this, when you're working on black. So whenever you do black t-shirts or anything on a dark color t-shirt, charge your customer more because of how much paint you're going to be going through. I bet you I've probably used about a half ounce of paint, maybe, maybe a little bit more. Hard to tell with the Badger airbrush because the color cups go into the cup, so you can only fill up the color cup about halfway. Yeah, black t-shirts are, are kind of that, you know, you don't, it's not a common thing, so, so when you're doing stuff on a black t-shirt, it has that more of a pop look to it. And that's where the illustration base helps, comes in, shooting that, uh, that extender down, shooting that clear binder down first, that helps with all the hair sticking up, gives it that smoother look. You know, if you're doing like a Predator t-shirt and stuff like that, it's kind of obvious you'd want want to do something evil like that on a black shirt. So it takes it takes about twice the amount of time because you're you're basing everything in white first. And if you had a gravity if you have a, a siphon feed airbrush to throw white in, that that would be a faster and more smarter way to go with this. Okay, now I'm going to come in here and start hitting out details. We're going to switch from the white into a gray. And we're basically going to treat it the same way that we did the last shirt.
I'm just going to hit in certain areas and kind of add texture to it. Just kind of get like a little pattern to it. We're going to kind of blend it out as we go over it, but I'm going to kind of use the black that's left over as kind of some of the texture. Cool. Now with the white, I, I leave just a little bit of white in the uh, in the airbrush. And then we're going to hit it with a uh, carbon black, is what ETAC calls it. It's their uh, dark black. Now we can use a Payne's gray. Actually, I'll use that. We'll start with the Payne's gray and start adding a Payne's gray into it. Now ETAC reduces with just straight water, so I'm going to reduce it down, just put a couple drops in there because I don't need it to go real full strength. Okay, now I'm going to look for the dark spots just like we did before and kind of go over it with the with the gray. Now what you're going to notice is it's almost the same color as what I'm doing so it's not going to show up too much but as we get darker it's going to start getting darker and darker. So I'm going to go into all the dark areas and just start building up color on that. Now you kind of see it just kind of soaks in and doesn't show, but it, it's actually there. Makes it to where I can come in and cut out my lines and start getting that that depth without without changing it too fast. So this is a Payne's gray with with white added to it. The way you kind of look at it is it's just another layer of a deeper white. So you don't want to hit your high spots, you don't want to hit all your highlight areas, but you want to start coming in and sketching your detail. You can kind of see how it's adding slight bit of texture, but without changing up changing a whole bunch. Now I probably could have gone with a little bit of a darker contrast. But this gives, gives it a little more of the forgiving nature to it. A good way to describe what we're doing right now is just kind of, as a wood carver, would sit there and dig out, dig out the wood. You're kind of just digging out the the dark areas, taking that bright white and just kind of knocking it down, taking the brightness out of it. So you're kind of pushing back where you don't want it to be real bright. Then you can start with the little cracks that are going in here. Kind of shadow this area. And you can see how the shadow is very, very subtle. You barely even notice it on there. But it's a way to kind of sneak up on it real slow. You're not, you're not going to change a whole bunch. 
real quick. So you kind of go in there and spend a little more time playing with different textures and stuff as you're moving along. So I'm just digging out the details, kind of shadowing it where it needs to be shadowed. And if you notice, it's not making a huge change on the on the color. So I actually have a lot of leadway to go in here and be able to to alter the lines and kind of play with it as I go.